welcome to Cinema's Underbelly, the channel where we dive into the deepest, darkest trenches of the underground to analyze and review the most obscure, obscene, and controversial films that cinema has to offer. I'm your host, Jonathan Doe, and today we will be reviewing the original Hills Have Eyes trilogy. Before we start this review, make sure to stick around till the end for your chance to win this mini poster signed by the legendary Michael Berryman. And if you haven't yet, don't forget to check out the recent interview I did with Mr. Berryman as well, which will be linked in the description below. Released in 1977 and directed by Wes Craven, The Hills Have Eyes is an American horror film that follows the Carters a white suburban family, as they find themselves stranded in the Nevada desert wilderness while being hunted by a family of local inbred cannibals residing in the desert hills. Craven drew inspiration for the film's plot from the Scottish 16th century legend of the Sawney Bean Clan, a 45-member group that were reportedly executed for the mass murder and cannibalization of over a thousand people. Now widely recognized as a cult classic, it is nice to see the careful detail that Arrow Video put in when constructing this release. From the beautiful audio and visual restoration, the extensive and lengthy list of bonus features, to the gorgeous cover art of both modern and original art pieces. This is by far, in my opinion, the best release of the film currently on the market. In 1984, Wes Craven returned to the desert to release The Hills Have Eyes Part 2. Not so much because he felt compelled to reprise the role of the film's characters, but because he saw the success that horror sequels at the time were making, and figured franchising The Hills Have Eyes would be a good way to make some money. An endeavor that almost did not happen, because about two-thirds into shooting the film, the studio halted production due to budget concerns. But after the box office success of A Nightmare on Elm Street, the studio convinced Craven to finish The Hills Have Eyes Part 2, using only footage that had already been shot. Since there was not enough footage for a feature-length film, footage from the first Hills Have Eyes was edited in to pad out the runtime, which led to the film consisting of a heavy amount of character flashbacks, which included a now cult favorite memory from the family dog. And though the film is almost unanimously panned, it is nice to see that Arrow Video gave this film the same care and attention that they gave the release of the first picture. In 1995, Joe Gayton released Mind Ripper on HBO, a film that has now come to be known as The Hills Have Eyes Part 3, a picture which initially contained a script intended to be a part of The Hills Have Eyes universe, but ultimately was edited out before the project even began shooting. In fact, the only relationship between this film and the previous Hills Have Eyes releases is that Jonathan Craven, Wes Craven's son, is credited as a writer. Beyond that, the film only holds minor similarities to the first two films, focusing instead on government scientists who attempt to reanimate a corpse they found in the desert, only to instead inadvertently create a mutant superhuman monster. This film, just as the previous Hills Have Eyes sequel, was met with criticism and a poor consensus, with even actor Lance Henriksen expressing embarrassment for his involvement with the film. In the end, it appears as though out of the three features, the original is the only title that really holds up. Part 2 may be worth a watch with the aid of some mind-altering substances, but Part 3 unfortunately holds very few redeeming qualities. Ultimately, if part one is the only film you have seen, you aren't missing out much by skipping the other two. But if you're a completist like me, it's nice to see that there are currently some good releases out there for the other two films. Now that we're at the end of the review, here's your chance to win this great mini poster of the original film signed by no one other than the legendary Michael Berryman. To be eligible to win, you must be a subscriber to this channel and comment on this video about which Hills Have Eyes film is your favorite and why. The winner will be randomly selected and announced during the beginning of my next review. As always, thank you for watching, and if you like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Till next time, this is Cinema's Underbelly.